I'm Andrea and I'm right here in Slovenia talking with my sister from South Africa and I want to welcome her into the Skype interview that we are doing today. So hello Eleftheria. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, actually, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I love that we are now in the Skype and we are actually doing the bridge from Slovenia to South Africa again. Yes. <laughs> and um, we will share with all that are watching today um, a new topic or maybe it's not a new topic, but it's a topic that definitely deserves attention right now at this very moment. For sure. Um, and it's connected with Divine Feminine because you are in service of Divine Feminine. You are working with Divine Feminine in South Africa. And um, you are also here in Slovenia uh, sharing your wisdom, facilitating the seminars with the woman here. And it was a great journey that we co-created. Um, so today the topics will be this call that you had that I had, <laughs> that people have yeah. when uh, start, something start to, starting to unfold in their lives. So, mm, I don't know. What do you think about this call? For sure. Um, it, it's something really, I think, valuable that, that we need to share with, with everybody is understanding the whole process of that beautiful journey. Whether the, the journey is... Um, creating a, 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 a kind of beautiful experience for yourself, whether it is creating um, a deeper sense of connection with yourself or personal growth, or whether this journey is about an experience that you want to experience. And on every journey, and it's been amazing to, to witness this kind of in my own personal life, but also witnessing it in, in kind of working with personal growth journeys over the last 10 years with, with others, is that every journey will have a call and then there will be threshold guardians that will come up. And when we can kind of see where we are on this journey, and I think we'll share um, my diagram that's based on, on the beautiful and profound work of, of Joseph Campbell and his hero's journey. And mine is adapted and it's just called the Sacred Feminine Journey. And once you can see where you are on this on this beautiful journey, this is when you can really truly start working with it and alchemizing it. So every time you set an intention to create something, um, or perhaps sometimes it's a call that comes to call you onto this journey or this pathway, threshold guardians will show up. So threshold guardians, like it, you can you can tune into it, and this is some kind of fear or something. Yes. Can you can you explain what the threshold guardians are? Sure. Threshold guardians really show up um, as doubt and fear. And if mm. we really become uh, completely aware of our limiting beliefs, and, and generally there's kind of there's about twelve limiting beliefs that I, that I really work with in my personal work. Those are the limiting beliefs that that create doubt and fear, and those are the things that come up the moment you set your intention on actually following that call and when fear shows up I've, always, I've said it a couple of times when fear shows up that's the time to really pay attention because anything really of value to you will will create fear will fear will show up in that and that is just a test of your conviction testing the conviction of your intention of what you want to actually create so instead of we have a choice in that moment when the threshold guardians come up and really stand in your, your way, you can either look into the eyes of the tiger and say, you, you're scaring me right now. However, I'm going to call deep on my courage and I'm going to look at all of the limiting beliefs that tell me that I can't do this and I'm going to alchemize those and I'm going to step past this threshold. And that's usually when all the magic and the, the mystery and starts unfolding of your journey. Well, and actually, there comes, you know, a little different thing, like confirmation. Once you choose your path, then you make a commitment, actually. Not confirmation, it's a commitment. Yes. And you might be just interested. And maybe you can explain the difference between interest and commitment. 
Yes, absolutely. For me, the clarity in, in mm -hmm. connecting and following the call and committing to it is really the discernment between is this coming from my ego self, my negative ego mm -hmm. self, or is this a heart calling? And when you look at the intention and you kind of, kind of tune into that intention and see is this something that my heart would love to experience or love to do or would, would love to expand in? And if that is your answer, and that's the, the, the kind of frequency that it's resonating at, then this is the, the beautiful journey that will then unfold, the magical journey. Interest, my ego, my negative ego may be interested in something. Is it really something my soul or my heart would really like to experience? Maybe not. So that's usually my discernment between the two. And if it's a heart call, it doesn't mean that the threshold guardians won't show up. They'll still show up. But you have you then make that commitment to the the intention of what you want to experience. And you had a great uh, experience with the call and the journey that unfolded for you. Uh, what was what was this call? Can you share with us this experience, this magic experience that, that you had? Yes, sure, with pleasure. It's one of my favorite favorite stories to share. Um, so thank you for inviting me to speak about it. Um, I about last year in November. In, in 20, 2012 in November, I had um, a meditation that I did. It was quite a very powerful meditation. And in that meditation, on a, it was on a lunar eclipse. Um, I had this beautiful, amazing vision where this white lion approached me and presented himself to me. And I was aware of the white lions and I was aware of, of um, their situation in South mm -hmm. Africa and that we really need to work with conserving them. Although I wasn't really really called by my heart to really connect there. And this meditation was quite powerful and really just called me to go to Timbavati, which is the ancestral lands of, of the white lions. I had no idea what was going to unfold. I never I didn't know how this journey was going to happen. I just knew it was a call and my heart really wanted this experience. And so um what usually happens for me is there's a call yeah. and then I just pay attention and I see what shows up in the universe, how the universe supports this. I'm open to the experience. And a couple of weeks later, uh, a friend of mine on Facebook shared that there was a, a wonderful animal communicator called Winter and she was doing the Starline journey at Sao Conservancy in, in, in Timbavati. And I thought, this is it. It's amazing. I had this meditation. I had this call. Here it is. Um, and on the journey, you'll see there's the call and then there's a magical guide that appears. And so this was kind of the magical guide for me, like pointing you in the direction. Yes, this is the way you need to go. And I looked at the application form and I kind of just sent her a message and I said, I'm in. I've had this amazing call to come and do this. I'm there. And she sent me the application forms. I had no idea how much it would cost. Uh, I had no idea, but I just knew it was something important for me. And then I opened the application forms. And there was the cost. And at that stage, <laughs> uh, and this was a huge threshold garden for me. I didn't have any extra cash to be able to do this. Uh, a lot of limiting beliefs came up for me. One, that I didn't deserve the experience or that I needed to spend that money responsibly elsewhere. And I had those, those limiting beliefs also sometimes get confirmed to you by people. Mm. Um, when my mom heard about the, the journey and how much it cost, she said to me, What? that much do they give you massages every day i mean you know and and with this experience most of the money goes to the conservation in any case it's really it's a great uh, donation and um but the threshold got it for me was it's a large amount of money how am i going to create this for this experience I think we all face with this threshold wow. garden at some point but for it's sure. great we want to hear how did you uh, sure. overcome this for sure and threshold guardians also can come in different forms. So there was a friend of mine at the same time that also had the call. Her call was also very different to mine. She just had a knowingness that this was something that she needed to do. It also came her way through Facebook, a wonderful tool of networking, <laughs> and uh, also came her way and uh, she knew she needed to go. But her threshold guardian was a band that she really wanted to see, which was playing at that time frame. So my threshold guardian was the money, hers was the band. So... I then started working to alchemize the threshold guardian and I needed to look at the doubts and the fears and all the limiting beliefs that were coming up. So this was really an opportunity for me to call deep in my courage and to really alchemize this thing, which I thought was impossible for me. 
And I, every day, when as the fear came up, I would just sit with it. I would acknowledge it. I would um, see where it came from. Where was it rooted? Where did I pick up that belief if I could identify it? And I would work on just resolving it, dissolving it, and then making, again, that commitment to that choice. Making that choice of, would I love this experience? Yes, my heart would love this experience. So did you apply, actually, at that time? Or you, you, you waited a little bit and first tried to look inside what's there? What are these fears and doubts? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. I looked inside. And sometimes what we do is we numb. We think, you know what, this is impossible for me. Uh, this is when you choose not to step through the threshold garden. Mm. You go, you know what, this is too much for me. I believe my limiting beliefs. I'm not going to push myself or look at it or I'm going to numb it. And we have various ways in which, which we numb emotions. Um, and so it was not numbing it, but really acknowledging, going, okay, yes, mm. I'm experiencing fear. I'm experiencing doubt. Where's this coming from? looking at where maybe in childhood I picked up these limiting beliefs, what they were, and really alchemizing it, knowing that transforming it, like pulling it apart and looking at the particles going, this isn't the truth. It's just an old program, and I have my power, which is free will and free choice, and I'm going to choose to step into my true power. And in the knowing this, that I, I'm a co-creator, right? I can, I can experience anything that I choose to experience. And so I would make that choice and reconnect with my heart and this experience on a daily basis. Wonderful opportunity came in. It was going to be a big kind of um, work opportunity that came in for me. And it would cover the whole cost. And I thought, this is amazing. This is it. It showed up. And... I even emailed um, the animal communicator to say, this is fantastic, I like it's amazing, the magic has happened, the money's in, I'll pay you a certain date, that's it, book me on, I'm coming. After I sent that email, the work opportunity went away. And I Oops. thought, what? <laughs> yes. Does this mean, this is, is this a message from the universe? Am I meant to not go? And that's often where we get stuck. Mm. So uh, I then looked at it again and I thought, is this a self-sabotaging aspect that's coming out now? Or is this still a call for me and it's another test? And again, I went into my heart space and I thought about this experience of connecting with the white lines, being in that beautiful space, knowing that my soul need, wanted this experience to expand, to grow, and whatever else was going to unfold there. So a bit of mystic and magical and myth that I wasn't quite sure about and I'm okay with the mystery. And the answer was, yes, this is your experience. This is part of your path. Even though there was a little voice going, don't know how you're going to do it, but yes, this is what you need to do. And I just continue to work with the, with the fear in alchemizing it every day as it came up, looking at where it was stuck in my body, just acknowledging it, working with that, alchemizing it. Actually, that was the whole journey that already started to unfold with the very first time that you committed to it, huh? Yes, absolutely. The second we commit to something, you get tested. Your conviction gets tested. Do you really want this? How much do you want it? Do you really think that this is your heart's call? So if we see those experiences as uh, stopping, or if we allow it to stop us, then we never get to experience the magic and the wonder and allowing that old negative ego limiting belief to actually really die and to be rebirthed in your truth. And once you... Once you really alchemize fear and doubt in a situation which you think is impossible, what happens after that is that you take on anything. You follow your heart with so much courage because you've had this really empowering experience. Mm, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful gift, actually. Uh, when you see it like this, it's a gift. You, 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 you really, really expand after that. So how is it unfolded? How it? How was with your second test? Yes, so my second <laughs> test came and I, and I thought, okay, so oftentimes we limit ourselves by trying to figure out exactly how we are going to do this. How am I going to create the money? And I thought that I'm also going to leave open. I'm really just going to focus, just place my focus on the end result of my experience. So I would feel myself actually being there. And without me even knowing how this all happened, my 
business just started picking up and picking up and I was getting busier and busier and prosperity was just flowing in and flowing in and wonderful miracles started happening like um, there's this beautiful work that I do with a herd of horses and uh, my co-facilitator in it said to me I know that you want to go to the white lions and this beautiful group that we're experiencing all the the money that's coming in for this I want you to take this um, because I know it's getting donated to the, the White Line Trust. So so please, you take you take this one. And I thought, wow, that's so beautifully generous. Thank you very much. And it was the exact amount of money I needed for the plane ticket. Wow. So there's, magic. It's just this magic starts unfolding, and you just have to stay open to it. And another thing that happened was, in one of my, my moments of doubt, when I thought, am I really meant to do this? Um... A, an SMS came through and there was a special um, on um, airplane tickets that was like 25% less. So if I bought it that day, then, then I, would, I would get a discount. And I had just had this experience where the money was given to me as a gift and, and I, I could buy this plane ticket at a discount. And mm. so there's these confirmations from the universe that also flow in at the same time. And, um, and, and I kept being tested right up until midnight, the night before I was supposed to fly on the plane. I had created more business, uh, more business opportunities and had one client um, that had committed to some, some coaching or spiritual counseling sessions with me and or a couple of them and, and th this money was supposed to come through and it just didn't come through until, and I just kept thinking, uh, you know, there's not much more I can do. I just have to trust. I really have to completely surrender and trust. And at midnight, the morning before I was supposed to fly, this money cleared in my account and it was there. And I, I could then mm. pay the money. That sounds like a very like powerful journey. Like till the end. Till the you last were on, till the, to the last second, the actually. Last second. Yes, yes. But that's how the universe... That's the bravest souls, I would say. Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But sure. now, after that, you know, you went. How was your experience? Oh. Was it... And the experience was just absolutely profound. It's a life-affirming experience. It really, it really has changed me in so many ways. Really, once you step onto this beautiful journey, there is really an aspect of your limiting beliefs that, that really just die forever. And there's a new aspect of you that knows that anything is possible, that gets reborn. Mm -hmm. And from that renewal, you start creating magical experiences. After that, I went to Slovenia. There's just so many, there's beautiful experiences that we're co-creating. There's all of this magic and wonder that's starting to flow into my life because I've just opened up to all of these possibilities. And every time a threshold garden comes up, I go, oh, I know you now. And I, I recognize you. And hello, great, let's, what else can we transform here? I mean, because I'm seeing it as, as a positive experience instead of a negative experience now. So how do you, you know, because now the different, there are different threshold guardians. And how do you now defer what is the threshold guardian, but what is really like the fear which is stopping you or maybe preventing you for, from something bad to happen? Uh, you know, there are different Sometimes you say, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to do this because something bad would happen to me and the universe is pro actually protecting me. So how do you yes. Dif yes. differentiate? Yes. Excellent question. I think, <sighs> I think we need to discern between danger and fear. And danger is, is that moment where um, a primitive kind of um, really instinctual uh, response gets gets activated in us and then there's the fear which fear is really a story that your your kind of mind and it comes from definitions and assumptions and limiting beliefs and that's what fear is and it creates the story and it creates a drama around an experience where danger is kind of a warning or even just sometimes it is an intuitive message that kind of comes up for you uh, so for example uh, I've experienced this maybe once or twice. Sometimes, you know, we don't listen um, to our intuitive <laughs> guidance. This is how we learn. Um, where I've, I have booked a date for a retreat or a workshop, and it fits into my schedule, forgetting that I'm co-creating with the universe, right? And I'll book the date, and as I book the date, I have this really clear message that comes in that says, that's not the right time. 
And then, and it doesn't come from a fear space. It doesn't come from a limiting belief space. It's not a doubt. It's not, it doesn't tell me that I'm not worthy of it or that I can't do it or that I'm not good enough. But it's just a very clear message from, from, my, from my angelic guides to say that that weekend's not going to work out. It's not alive do you think that, for everybody. Yes. Do you think, just a little bit of uh, interruption here or maybe um, because I want to ask you, now that you shared that you, you got this message from, you know, it's a clear space that you're getting the message through. Um, the message from fear or limiting beliefs or everything that you explained, mm -hmm. do you feel it in your body maybe? Is this the, the, the different thing? Do you feel it somehow that you can discern, oh, this is coming, this is not a clear space, this is something that it causes me some pain or uh, uncomfortable, I don't know, situation or something? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, th I think that is very, I think it's different for each person. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that I've worked with, generally, a lot of people feel fear in their, in their solar plexus, really, because that is where, where our will really comes from, you know, and, and where there's a will, there's a way. So <laughs> when we, yes, true. this is when, when we're really stepping into um, really engaging that higher sense of a will aligned with your heart to help you to have the courage to push through the threshold guardians or to alchemize them really. And um, so this is, this is that, that kind of world. But different, different people experience fear in different places in their body. Um, some people experience it in the chest. I guess it could be in the body, but for different, some people it could be a very mental thing. It could be really just limiting especially if they numb all of the emotions they wouldn't quite it wouldn't even be in the body for mm. them it would, they would just shut it off at the mental kind of body as well okay great so it unfolded with the you get the clear message for the for the you know the message from angelic eyes from yes. for you yes. and then you proceed and then you listen yes. to it actually yes well yeah. yes hopefully yes yeah <laughs> And if I do, um, and I check in with the group or I, or I tune into a date which will serve the group, it just flows all together. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. E uh -huh. Effortlessly. Yeah. Also, I just wanted to discern between discomfort because sometimes we confuse fear and doubt with discomfort. Um, it, we really, you know, magic only happens outside the comfort zone. So, so sometimes it's about allowing yourself to be in discomfort because it's not comfortable having your threshold guardians or your, your fears or your doubts really being around you and in your face, like really just reflecting everything for you. So that's not comfortable, but that doesn't mean that it's not aligned with where you are right now on your journey or your path. But actually, it's a great gift because you you have you you can see all your limiting beliefs and you can really face them. And if you are, I don't know, would we say brave enough? <laughs> you have to have courage, probably, yes. to face them and step through. Absolutely, and okay. to to know that when you're courageous and when you're brave, it's not because you're without fear. It just means that you are brave and afraid at the same time. And that's okay. And that, it, it, that courage really means that you're facing the fear. That's what it means. Yes. And staying in hard space. Staying in the hard space. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, great. So, um, what happened for your friend, you know, the threshold guardian oh, yes. and the band? Yes. Uh, did she answer the call too? <laughs> she listens much quicker and easier than what I do. So she just had a knowingness that this was something really that was her soul's call. She needed to come. And she was thinking, oh, should I? Because the money wasn't a problem for her. That was not her threshold guardian. And she was thinking, oh, it's my birthday. I really want to see this band. Should I? Shouldn't I? And she was like kind of sitting with it at the same time as what I was like processing all my fears and my doubts. And she just retuned into that choice. And she thought, is this something my heart would love? Is this something my soul is calling me to do? And the answer was yes. And she let it go. She, she thought there would be another opportunity to see the band. Not a problem. This is really her call. And she answered it. And she went with it. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. So you went together? To yes, it was wonderful. It was an and then experience. the white lines gifted you. 
Oh, yes. It really mm. is one of those life-affirming, profound experiences. If you're ever in South Africa or you're planning to, to come to South Africa and book a trip, um, I will perhaps share the, the link to the White Lion um, Trust um, for you to actually go and visit them or join a retreat that's happening there. Um, it's a beautiful experience. It's a wonderful project. And it's one of those those really amazing experiences which which it's almost like when people swim with dolphins they have that phenomenal connection and reconnection to nature and this this magical kind of awakening that happens and i guess that would be the best way to describe it there was a huge spiritual awakening for me ah uh, it's beautiful thank you so much for sharing this journey because um it's a great journey to be shared <laughs> and a lot of gifts in it. And I think um, the stories that happen to us, you know, they must be shared. Um, I think we can all learn something from, from your story too. Um, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. And I guess this would be the topic for, for this interview. Um, and I'm sure that all that that will watch this and that are watching this uh, will get a message for themselves too because it's it's an invitation to face your fears to go through your to, to, to actually meet and greet your threshold guardians they are the greatest gift that, that you will ever get mm -hmm. because they will face you with your hidden abilities with your potential and they will face you with your highest potential that you can open to if you're willing to of course so, thank you very much, Elefteria. Thank you. I really, I hope and I believe in my heart that we um, gave some little golden keys to the, <laughs> to the, or to, to all the public. I hope and, so. Yes, and I think we have more topics to cover, <laughs> but that will be for another Skype interview or <laughs> interview live. <laughs> <laughs> So for now, I would just like to conclude, maybe if you have any message for for the end. Uh, we hope that, that this uh, sharing of the Threshold Guardians and really alchemizing fear inspires and empowers you. And um, thank you very much for listening and thank you for assisting us to all move into expanded consciousness as we're co-creating and doing this together. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Beautiful conclusion. So you're invited to this new co-creation of the new world. Thank you all for watching. I will say goodbye to South Africa and goodbye to all that are watching. <laughs> Much love.